I just finished installing OpenTX 2.3.3 on my Jumper T16. That's the first version of OpenTX to support the Jumper T16 and it's pretty freaking exciting because it means I can use this OpenTX companion PC software to set up my radio, mouse and keyboard instead of these freaking knobs and just, this isn't bad, but a mouse and keyboard is gonna be way easier to set up the radio. And that's a good thing because after upgrading to Jumper to OpenTX 233, the whole radio got wiped out. There's no way to bring your models forward from Jumper TX to OpenTX. So that means I have to rebuild the whole radio from scratch. But I'm going to take that as an opportunity to show you guys how much easier it is to set the model up in OpenTX Companion versus setting it up from scratch on the radio. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. In just a second, I'm gonna walk you through building your whole radio configuration and setting up your new model. But before we do that, I actually, there's, there's a thing we gotta do first. I made a video where I showed you how to put OpenTX 233 on your radio. And literally the day I released that video, they released OpenTX 234, which had a really, really important bug fix in it. So I actually updated the links in the description of that video, and there's a chance that you already put 234 on your radio without even knowing, or maybe you did know it. But you gotta just do a check, power your radio on, and long press the sys button, and then page to version. And if you have 233 here, then you need to flash 234 to your radio. And the good news is when you started up OpenTX Companion, you may have gotten a message saying, hey, there's a new version. Do you want to download it? You should get that the minute you start OpenTX Companion, or you can go to the OpenTX.org website and just download 234 that way. Either way, you need to have two, OpenTX Companion 234, and you need to have file download and flashed 234 to your radio. Now that you've done that, <laughs> let's set up the radio. Warning. And the first thing you're going to notice is that I'm getting a throttle warning, even though my throttle is all the way down. What the heck? Um, yeah. Switch warning. Uh, the radio thinks this is the throttle. In other words, radio thinks it's in mode one. And that's weird because I guarantee you in OpenTX Companion, when I flashed it, I set it to mode two. But okay, who cares? Let's fix that first. We're going to hold down the sys key. And here in radio setup, I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom and the very last option is mode we're going to change that from mode one to mode two now if you don't fly in mode two if you fly in mode one great leave it how it is and if you fly in mode three or mode four you're a weirdo don't do that okay vic fpv you are the one exception if he flies in mode three but i did an interview with vic fpv about whether he thought it was a good idea for everyone else to fly in mode three you can check that interview out it's linked in the video description we're going to go with mode two for now Okay, so now it knows which one is my throttle, and we're good there. The next thing I need to do is long press sys and page to hardware. Highlight calibration and hit enter. You may have already done this, but if you haven't done this at any point, you're going to go ahead and do this. Uh, every time you update the firmware, it's a good idea to rerun re the calibration. And to do the calibration, we're going to center the sticks, including the throttle. And you also need to th center the pots and the side sliders all analogs need to be centered and then we're going to hit enter and we're going to move them all to their full extent and when you do that do not press hard press gently if you press too hard then you'll throw off the calibration because you're not going to press that hard in real life same thing with the side sliders move them gently to the full extent of their movement and the potentiometers and the last thing and many people would overlook this but you also have to calibrate the sixth position so if you watch down here at the bottom while I hit the sixth position watch it's going to go one two three four five six and all the way back down until it moves correctly. Having done that, it's an analog, even though it doesn't look like an analog input. Having done that, we'll hit enter. We finish calibration. Huh, 
It also looks like the default channel ordered. I set it to AETR, but it's set to RETA. Yeah, even though I set that, maybe I didn't write those settings or something, but let's go ahead and change that, even though I... Beta flight, I believe, is AETR. Okay. So now I am going to plug my radio into USB, and we're going to try to do the rest of this through the computer. It's going to ask what I want. I'm going to choose USB storage and then we'll just set that aside. Now that I've got USB plugged in, I'm going to see these two removable drives pop up and one of them my SD card and one of them the, I don't know, the memory of the radio. And we're ready to read, write and read models and settings from radio. I'm going to hit edit radio settings and let's just check. Yeah, so this is where we could set the mode and the channel order. I'm not sure why that wasn't preset from when I flashed it, but this is where we could change all of these settings from the radio setup screen if we wanted to. And I'm just gonna hit store calibration and hardware settings in selected profiles so that those things that were on the radio are now stored here in the software profile. Here in global functions, action, volume, S2, this setup will let me use uh, S2 as a volume knob for the whole radio. Uh, that's something I like to do on my radios. So I can turn the volume down if I don't want it shouting at me while I'm flying. And now you'll see here that we've already got a default model loaded on the radio, but I'm gonna go ahead and delete that because for example, the channel order doesn't match the default channel order we've set up and a few other things aren't quite right. So I'm just gonna delete that existing model and I'm going to add a new model and double click to open that up. And the first thing I want to do is rename the model. We're just going to rename it Crossfire. I like to have one model for each of my receiver types. So one for Crossfire, one for T uh, D16, one for D8, and so on. For all of my models, I like to enable extended limits. A lot of the time this isn't necessary, but for example, on spectrum radios, you often have to go to like plus 125% and minus 125% to get the endpoints correct for beta flight. Extended limits will let you do that. There's no harm in having it turned on unless you're using servos, in which case you could damage your servo by trying to make it go too far, but that's clearly not an issue for us. The internal radio is going to be off. The external radio is going to be crossfire. We're going to skip the flight modes tab entirely. We don't use that. The inputs tab is set up. We have nothing really to do here. It's as it should be. And we come to the mixes tab. The next thing we need to do is set up our aux modes. And in a previous video, I showed you how I set up all my aux modes on one channel. Since I wasn't able to read that stuff directly off the jumper because OpenTX wouldn't let me, I'm gonna have to actually refer to the video where I've got a picture of my previous screen and set that stuff up. So this is all gonna go on channel five and I'm going to add a new mixer line. First mixer line is named disarm. The source is max. The weight is 100. And that is all. At this point, some of you might be thinking, this is kind of easier to do in the radio the the scrolling up and down to set the weight, for example, is really tedious in the radio because you can just type in minus 10%. But the selecting the switches is way easier in the radio because you can just flip the switch and it auto fills. So it's, it's in a little bit of a sense a toss up of which one's easier. Naming the mixes is way easier here with a keyboard, obviously, rather than using the scroll wheel. Let's just um, duplicate this one and edit the new one. The next one is gonna be named arm. The source is max. The weight is minus 20%. And the switch position is SF up. Now at this point, I've set up my all aux modes on one channel setup, but a lot of you aren't going to want to do anything that complicated. I just want to show you how it, you can set up this stuff in OpenTX Companion versus on the radio. If you did want to do something very, very simple, just like an arming mode, you could just do add new mode, name arm, 
the source would be whichever switch you were going to pull. So that's SF, right? SF is going to be your arming switch. Boom. And that's it. That's just it. You're done. You just set up your arming mode. So it doesn't have to be something big and complicated. But the more complicated it is, actually the easier it gets to do it in OpenTX Companion. The next thing I like to do is put a throttle limit on this potentiometer here so that if I have a quadcopter that's usually this happens with micros if it's too powerful I can just turn the throttle down to like 50% just by turning this but I don't like that to be active all the time because I don't want to accidentally have it turned down when I'm flying my regular quad so I control it with this switch here and here's how I do that I'm going to do that by modifying the throttle channel we're going to start with a weight of 100% that's just the normal throttle output and I'm going to add a new mixer line and I'm not even going to bother to name these. I'm going to set the source as S1, which is that left potentiometer. The weight is going to be 50%, and the offset is going to be minus 50, and the multiplex is going to be multiply, and the switch is going to be, that is switch SC. We're going to have SC in the middle position to activate this mix. And we're going to duplicate that. And the next one is going to be S1 with a weight. Nope, I got that wrong. 50 and minus 50 and add. And 50 and 50 for the multiply. And I realize that at this point, you, you may be following along and going, how did you figure that out? Well, I have a whole video about that. It's throttle limit on a side slider and goes through sort of working this out. But the short version is that I'm just looking at this last comment I made on that video, which reminds me exactly how to set it up, and I'm setting it up. What else might we need to do? Here in outputs, I'd like to name my outputs. So there's channel one, two, three, and four, and that is aileron, elevator, throttle, and rudder. Let's just name those outputs real quick. Yeah, why not? And we'll name that aux, aux, just aux or whatever, because it's on my aux channels. Finally, I want to look at the telemetry screen with you, and you may notice that there are no telemetry sensors here. Well, if you've never seen this before, that may not jump out at you, but the reason there's no telemetry sensors is because I haven't bound this to a quad yet, and I haven't discovered any telemetry sensors. Once I do that, this will populate with telemetry sensors, and I can play with them. I could go to the input screen, for example, and I could add an RSSI aux channel output, which you need telemetry sensors to do that etc. So for now we're going to leave the telemetry screen alone but there is one thing I do want to do and that is for crossfire if we want to have an RSSI warning we need to set that up manually using logical switches and in fact with crossfire what we really need to do is adjust the low and critical alarm so that we don't get false warnings. Crossfire RSSI sometimes confuses the radio. We can actually lower this all the way down Crossfire doesn't really read RSSI right and can confuse the radio. I think 20 is the minimum. We're going to take this all the way down to 20, so we're not getting false alarms. But I guess we also need to set up the logical switches to set up the warning, but we can't do that because we haven't got any telemetry sensors yet. So, And then I'm going to hit read write and write models and settings to radio. And then I'm going to disconnect the USB and... What I want you to see is that it has updated and is now showing my new model right here in the radio. So everything I've done has been reflected in the radio. To get the Crossfire RSSI warning working, I am going to need to bind this quad. Now it should already be bound. Yeah, so you can see we've got green here. It's already bound because the Crossfire module will remember its binds. Will the internal module remember its binds? I'm not sure about that. Having done that, the next thing we're going to do is radio setup and page to telemetry and discover new sensors. And when we do that, a whole bunch of telemetry sensors will come in. Okay, now, fine, that's done. Now we're going to plug in USB, select USB storage, and we're going to close this OTX file. We'll save those changes, sure, and we'll do read models and settings from radio. 
And now when we open the Crossfire model, we're going to see in the telemetry screen, there's a whole bunch of new telemetry sensors that have come in. And that, I think, is the real power of OpenTX Companion. Not necessarily that it's faster or easier to set up like aux modes there versus on the radio. I could almost have done all that stuff faster here on the radio just because I have so much practice at it. Everything except naming the modes, which is so much easier with a keyboard. The real power of OpenTX Companion is that you can read those models off the radio. You can back them up. Watch. File. Save as. T16 backups. Models and settings after OpenTX upgrade. Now, if I ever lose my radio, if for some reason my models get wiped out or messed up, all I have to do is plug my radio in and do write models and settings to radio, and boom, they get bumped back, and that is really nice. But to be honest with you, there are still some things that are easier to do here on the radio. For example, if I go to the model setup, the switches, right? My switch warnings, where if the switch is in the wrong position when I power up, it'll give me a warning. That is so much easier to set simply by putting the switches in the desired positions and then just click this button. Boop. No, long press, my bad. Then just, then just long press this button and it just updates them so that the switch warnings are whatever your current switch positions are. That is so much easier and faster than just using the, trying to use the pull down menus from within Companion. But there are some things you can do with OpenTX Companion that are much more difficult to do on the radio itself. For example, if I duplicate this model, so I'm gonna need a Crossfire model, but I'm also gonna need a FreeSky model. So let's open up this model and let's call this one uh, FreeSky D16. Okay, we're going to change the external protocol to off and the internal protocol to multi-protocol free sky D16. Oh, no, we want D16 8 channel. And fail-safe mode is going to be no pulses. And perfect. That's fine. So now we've changed that over. And everything we did before is the same. Our aux channels and our mixes, that's going to transfer between models. But let's say I want to do something else, something new or fancy or different, and I'm going to add a new mix, my custom mix, whatever it is. doesn't matter what it is. Now let's say I want to copy that over to my Crossfire model. Well, I can just open up the Crossfire model. And so here is my one model. Here's my other, I go to the mixer tab, I right click, I copy this, and I right click, and I paste it there, and look at that, isn't that freaking cool? I can just move stuff in between and, and keep my models in sync and just manage them a whole lot easier. So, now you have seen what OpenTX Companion can do. It's helpful not just for setting up your models, but it's also helpful for backing up, saving and restoring your models, or synchronizing your models between multiple radios. If you have multiple radios, you can write these to each of them individually. Even if you have different, like if you have an x Lite and a Jumper T16 and an X9, I don't know if you have a bunch of radios, you can actually transfer this stuff between them. It doesn't always go perfectly because the switches are not the same between them all, but it makes it a whole lot easier than if you were trying to do it just by manually setting them up without a PC. That's going to do it for this video. I hope that it was worth it. I hope that when you get a little experience with Companion, you'll feel that rebuilding your whole freaking radio from scratch when you left Jumper TX behind was worth it. And I hope that now that you're in the OpenTX ecosystem, you'll start to see that you don't have to go through this BS again. And in fact, even if you if you decide you don't like Jumper and you want to switch to a Tyrannus, guess what? You don't have to start from scratch. Any OpenTX radio that you switch to in the future, you'll be able to just take these models with you. And that is why so many of us really love OpenTX and why I almost completely ignore any radio that doesn't have OpenTX on it. I've just been in the ecosystem so long and it's so useful and comfortable to me that I just carry all this stuff forward and my radio always works the way I want it to. And that is a really, really cool thing. Thank you so much for watching. If you did value this, can I remind you that this is my full-time job making videos that help you get better use of your equipment. This is complicated stuff, but I hope that if you watch these videos, you feel a little bit more comfortable with it. And if that's true, 
then if you feel like I've earned it, I'd love to have you as a patron. Patreon is a website where for a couple bucks a month or more, if you feel like I earned it, you can support me and make it possible for me to keep doing this. Uh, link to that is down in the video description as well as all the other Jumper TX playlist that I made with all my Jumper TX setup and lots of other good stuff. Check the video description. That's where I always put it. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any trouble with this, please ask in the comments or reach out to me on Facebook. I do my best to help everybody who asks. I try to make the videos as comprehensive as I can, but there's always going to be some questions left over and you can always reach out to me and I'll do my best to help you. Thanks so much for watching. Happy flying. All right, I give up. I cannot figure out how to get those f sound files to show up either in Companion or in the uh, radio, so I guess I just quit. What do you quit about? I'm I sorry, I wasn't listening. Oh, I'm sorry, I was talking to the camera. Oh. Do you want to be in this video? No, I thought you were talking to me. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm going to leave. Okay, bye. Okay. <laughs>